Well, folks, we got this all glued up and it is dry, so we are going to go ahead and square this up. The Frozen Woodworker is a production of Frostbite Furniture, and today is brought to you by Sawdust. Let's get making some. And then we will take care of uh, putting in the plugs and uh, get building on the, uh, the board that's going to go onto the wall for the hinge. So, first things first, go ahead and take off the clamps. And then I like to use, for a job like this, um, I'll use my track saw. Um, and I'm gonna, in order to make that easier, we're gonna take uh, these one by fours. They're actually the same boards that we used uh, to clamp together these uh, wide ends here. I'm gonna get this out of the road. Doesn't need to be there. Oh, and uh, here I'll show you quick what we're actually gonna be doing. If uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I really explained that very well. Okay, if it wasn't really explained very well earlier, what I'm gonna be doing here, the whole cutting thing is you can see right here I built the uh, ends so that they're a little bit long and they stick out just a little bit proud and it's uh, not quite as much with the same thing right here from the other side so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking our uh, track saw and cutting so that I'm just barely skimming this which will then we'll cut this flat and then I'll be doing the same thing in this direction now you could do the same thing with a table saw but uh, because of, like these bumps that come out and stuff I prefer to do this job with the track saw and um, before I owned a track saw I, I did it with the table saw all the time uh, but now that I own a track saw well, it's kind of the way to do it. Okay so let's set, let's set this up. First thing I get out the track saw. Still trying to decide if I like the case that Makita has for this or not. It's a little on the stiff side. But anyway you take this track and then you take the clamps. Now I'm going to have to angle this a little bit so that it hangs over the edge so that way there is uh, you know, actual physical space for these clamps to sit. Okay, so the first thing that I do is uh, the way this track saw works is there's a, a fine rubber edge here that was originally made by running the saw over the track and this cuts off the, the rubber at exactly where the edge of the saw blade is. So you can use that as a uh, essentially a lineup for where you're going to be cutting. And then it's got built in tracks in the, or kind of tracks for the clamps on the bottom so that way you can clamp it tight you look, everything is uh, nice and accurate. You see, you can get nice and close there. And as you look down, you can see I got just the shiver. Like, heck, you can barely even see it in the camera, but it, it overhangs ever so slightly right here so that the blade is going to just touch the wood. And these bottom tracks, see, it's got that slot. <clears throat> and then this clamp is designed to fit in there and then you just it's just a basic F style clamp but with the top side of it meant to fit inside that groove That's all that's needed for that. Next we're going to go on to making the contrasted plugs for the, the holes here. For that we are going to need the drill and a plug cutter. Now when we cut a contrasting plug we, we use something like this. This is a, a plug cutter. You see it'll cut uh, into the wood. Um, it's fairly slow but it'll cut into the wood and it will leave uh, a perfect plug. Almost similar to a hole saw uh, for those that are more construction or more familiar with construction tools uh, except for this will do it a very nice job and it doesn't leave that uh, hole in the middle like a hole saw does. Well, let's get the 
tight set you want to have a, um, a backer board on the drill press whenever practical. We'll jack it up up to here. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, cut some plugs. Okay, and there is uh, the first of our plugs. Now, if uh, we weren't needing such a deep plug like we'll need on this project, um, I would actually cut them just part way through and then take the bandsaw and rip it the length and the plugs will fall out. I'll demonstrate that in another video at some point here. Uh, but for this project, I need a, a real deep plug like this. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna cut a bunch of these. Uh, then we can go and uh, get set up and do it on the other end. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to cut the holes in our gate uh, to receive the plugs that we just made. First off, I'm going to take my uh, center finder. Uh, I put this on the corner here. It's going to help me to draw a perfectly straight line between this corner and this corner. Next, I'm going to take my compass that I have set to an inch and a quarter just because that's what I chose to go with for the distance on this. You could just measure it, but I prefer to use something like a compass like this. So. That way it's easier to stay very, very consistent all the way across. My compass does not have a pencil on the end like one you might have used in school, so I have to kind of mark it and I can scribe it, uh, but I'm putting a pencil mark there hoping that'll show up a little bit better for you. And now I could go ahead and I could put this on the drill press. Uh, and that's probably the little more correct way to do this, uh, but putting a gate like this up on the drill press uh, is going to require a lot of you know, stuff to hold it and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I, I prefer just to hand drill it. Uh, I'm gonna be using a Forrester bit that is the exact same size as the plug cutter that we use. So that way uh, the plugs exactly match the hole. You line the center of the bit up right on the thing. And you wanna be extra, extra careful that you are perfectly straight in both directions. You can't lean this way, this way, and you definitely can't wobble as you go down. So it really pays to take your time, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. We'll grab two of our plugs, and then we'll get a little glue. Um, it's a little easier to plug a hole when uh, uh, they're not all the way through like this, but one of the reasons we're doing these plugs is to provide a little extra strength uh, in there. Sometimes you'll plug a hole to hide a screw. Uh, this one, it's, that's not the case. Uh, there are no screws. The plug is actually the part of the bonding mechanism. And I know a ball peen hammer is not the correct tool for this. Uh, but um, I'm not 100% sure on where my rubber mallet went. Okay. Uh, one little trick here, or tip, or tip is uh, whenever you get any glue on any of your metal tools, be sure to wipe it off right away because the glue will rust it up pretty quick. Okay, we're all the way through. Uh, once this dries, we can sand it off quick. I'll give you a nice little close-up on what it looks like. And uh, that way you can kind of see the detail of why we are doing it. Uh, they'll not only provide a lot of strength within the joint and strengthen up this lap joint, which is only a mediocrely strong joint. Uh, it'll make it a lot stronger and it'll be a nice little decorative accent on there. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I will uh, finish up the rest of this gate. I'm going to do the other four or the other three corners and uh, we'll catch you when we're done with that. All right, folks, now that this is all dry, the next thing is going to be to go and sand off these plugs nice and flush and uh, basically do a lot of the final sand on this project. So I'm going to get right to it. All 
right, now it's time to go ahead and uh, start it. So I'm going to attach all the hardware to this uh, before I do the actual total finish sand. Uh, that way, because I'm going to cut a couple little notches off over here for uh, some knobs that's going to help hold this to the wall. Um, so, uh, we'll go ahead, we'll attach the hardware. That way we, we can place it, we can get everything lined up for it. And, and then we can remove the hardware, uh, do the final sand, stain it, poly it. And, uh, and then of course reattach the hardware uh, before we bring it for delivery. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to check out any more, please feel free to like our videos. Please subscribe. We love subscribers. And uh, check out the rest. Thanks. Bye-bye.